It has been a while between hunts of late, but we're finally stepping up our game and the game is about to get real interesting. I'm Liam Fitzpatrick and this is another episode of Hunt Film Edit. This hunt we're heading out to a property at the foothills of a massive chunk of untouched bushland where the animals are coming down daily to take advantage of the farm's grazing land. I'm back out with my good mate Michelanis Brown and my new hunting buddy Mick Kavarik, who both grew up shooting and hunting but are dedicated bow hunters these days. I'm hoping to finally loose an arrow at something a little more substantial than the small game I've taken up until this point. Even though I've had the opportunity to go after some big game over this past year or so without any success, it has taught me a harsh lesson that I have to make and learn from my mistakes if I'm going to eventually succeed. I need to earn some experience out in the field the only way I know how, mooching around the bush with a bow in my hand. I'm back to the original plan of starting out small and working my way up to bigger and better things without diminishing the fact that I'm grateful for every ounce of meat offered up by the smaller animals so far. This property has a few hunting options including fallow deer and feral pigs, but for this hunt, it's all about wild goats. Uh, it's the first morning of our two day hunt. Just come up this hill. The whole idea is get up high. Most of these goats, from what Mick's been telling us, will make their way down towards the paddocks below us. And they're coming out from the backside. Just sit up here. We've got southwest wind pushing up the hill, so our breeze is going to the neighbor's property. We can't go that way. We're just sitting here, looking out. We've got a bit of a gully. Comes out that way, they could come down. We're just having a look, having a glass at the minute. Hopefully see something, make a plan, make a move on it. Head down there, down to the valley. We're in glass up here a bit more, to the second valley. And I think later on today, we're going to be coming down to that main ridge that we can see along the tree line there. It is estimated that there are more than 2 million feral goats on the Australian landscape ranging across the majority of the mountainous, rough terrain of our semi-arid regions. We just heard our first goat. Back down in this gully. It was making a move down there quietly. Though the reason they took hold and became such a problem is blamed on poorly managed livestock farming practices with escape goats proliferating outside the boundary of fences. Any feral animal, whether big or small, has an impact on the environment and the effects of feral goats is more visible during times of drought where they reduce vegetation cover, increasing the impacts of erosion when the rains finally come. They also have the potential to spread noxious weeds, foul up waterholes and even carry and spread disease to other domestic cattle and stock. As someone that is relatively new to bow hunting, I still have a lot to learn. As I continue along this path, a big part of it is to put meat in the freezer, and I feel like the opportunities offered up by feral goats is a great place to start. Uh, we reckon those goats moved up that gully, that wind changed direction. It was blowing across us before, now it's blowing straight up in there. Not cool. We're gonna make a move down out on the flat and look back up here. This hunting game, so much to it. After an extensive morning walking up and down the hills from one end of the property to the other, we ended up getting a general lay of the land, but we had all but given up on the goats doing what they were supposed to be doing. That is until we heard some faint bleats coming from a distant paddock. We spotted goats. We got them. Facing in the wind, they're what? 200 meters out of the way? 250. Yeah. There's a mob of them, about a dozen. Just trying to push up, get the better wind, make a move on them. Yeah, 
Let's go to Saints. Let's get one. straight up and then stalked up this guy hung around got within 20 he'd behind a scotch this on bubble lunged him and get these things straight down in the shade mixed going after one we had a stalk he had a stalk on a couple of the big billies but they took off but there's still some little ones down here so if we can get three far we're done Three down, boys. Nice. <laughs> 11.25, three down. I haven't even lost an arrow yet. That. And you can still hear them bleating up in the hills. Nah. Yeah, if you're keen, you push for another three. Well, that's what he makes that, mate. Like, do it again tomorrow. Nah. Well, if, yeah, but nah. to be fair, nah. the idea of gutting and skinning and cleaning oh, yeah. six goats is a nightmare to me. So yeah, now right, let's do this. Three's enough for me. Yep. Nice little nemi for dinner tonight. The heart. Down what, five, ten meters? Ten meters max. With three goats on the ground, this hunt couldn't have gone any better. Thoughts of a goat curry for dinner start drifting into the back of my mind. But on a scorching hot 38 degree day, those thoughts quickly turn to getting the guts out of these animals 
and getting them in the shade to get them cooled down as soon as possible. Here's your heart. That's ready to eat now. That's actually nice. That's really fatty. Dude. Yeah, look at it. That's a good heart. Well, might as well get it while it's visible. Slice straight through the bottom ventricle. Funk. Shot, Nick. Bloody goats everywhere. Here we go. We got goats, man. We got goats. Drive the car up. How good's that? There we go. Had them airing out in the shade. Open the cavities up. String on the bull bar, get them back to camp, hang them up, get them ready, put on ice. Back at camp, we string them up and start the butchering process, keeping the heart and kidneys for breakfast the next day. As we break down the animals, we get all the cuts wrapped up and straighten the cooler on ice. Once the bulk of the work is done, I get to work prepping that night's dinner and getting a few strips and some marinade for tomorrow's lunch before we head home. After a few hard-earned cold ones and a belly full of food, we crawled into our swags, ready to do it all again tomorrow. Waking up to the hot sun roasting the side of the swag, we have no choice but to get up and get ready to hit the hills again. We cooked up some heart and kidneys for breakfast, loosened an arrow or two, laced up the boots and headed to the opposite flat where the goats came down on the day before. We've uh, started a gentleman's hours. We figured those goats didn't come down till late in the morning yesterday, so there's no point rushing up there. Had a bit of heart and kidney for breakfast. Got our boots and everything on, ready to go. Today, yeah, we've got our meat. That cool is full. The boys are keen to get a big billy, big set of horns on it, so I've got enough meat. Uh, like I said, I'm not into trophies, so I'm just filming. I've got the big camera, I've got the drone. I'm gonna try and get some cool drone shots. It'd be sick if we can put it up without spooking them and get a shot of one of the boys taking a shot with their man, the goat, in the frame. So, there's a couple big mobs. If we blow one out, it doesn't work. We still got a couple others to work, so. Should be a good little hunt. Let's try and figure out. And that might be a fresh mob too, you know. Yeah. Not scattered about yesterday. Well, that last mob we seen yesterday over here, that was a different mob again than what we yeah. first hunted. So, at least three mobs coming down. And then, worst case scenario, <laughs> go back and sit at camp at one o'clock. <laughs> And wait for those three billies to walk up the fence line. So we've come to the other end of the property. Those winds have swung on us. They're blowing south, east, south, west of today. Come along the front road, back up to the back side here. And the flat that we got them on yesterday is over. But this flat in front of us here had goats come down on it. So we're just glassing, looking up, seeing if they're going to come down. If they start coming from behind, we can make a bit of a move, but they should pop out somewhere here. And then they definitely pop out onto that flat over there. We're a little earlier than when they come down yesterday. We thought we'd just get here, get set up, watch them come out. And, yeah, just glassing, looking for them, waiting them to show up now. Goats don't appear to be doing what they did yesterday. They either learnt their lesson because they killed three of their buddies. We've been sitting here, we've got the wind coming across us. They were down by now yesterday. They're starting to contemplate our next move. Might be worth driving around to the other end and just checking back up. They've gone across with that change of wind. I don't know, we've got a lot of theories, but bit of a stalemate at the moment. Even though we felt like we'd made the right decision for the morning's hunt, changing our position on the property to accommodate the change in wind direction, spending a few hours glassing the hills for no sign of activity had us questioning our game plan. We headed back to camp feeling slightly defeated 
and opted to have a quick look at the back of the property when we spooked some goats driving down the track. We're just driving up this back track. We're gonna have a last look. No goats came down in that bit. That flat they were on yesterday. I'm like, oh, we'll just drive this track. There's a mob of about 10 or 12. Just killed the car. They're just sort of milling up there. The wind's probably still right. If we can get up in the car, I don't know, we're gonna, we might put a stalk on these guys. Right? Just assessing the situation. sent Mitch down with a camera on his head just to have a go at those those guys so the mob was bedded down they're blowing and snot and sneezing whatever you want to call it they come out Mick sort of had a crack trying to range one crossing a little trail in front of us but sort of blew that stalk by the field and Mick's out there still having to go after him because there's two kids come out they were lagging behind the mob I think they've stopped to wait up for him. They had us made from the minute we left here. The, the noiseless, the quietest route down to them was also the most visible. Once you dropped over that ridge line, it was just this shit. There's no way to be quiet. I got within 26 yards of that big billy, but trees and bushes in the way, there was no chance I was getting a shot away. So next time next time. Even though the final hunt was unsuccessful, it was exactly the kind of lesson I needed to learn. Not every hunt is going to come easy. You can't always pop up out of a gully having everything in your favour and take your pick of the animals. That's just not going to happen every hunt. Sneaking around this dry bushland trying to get close to an animal is no easy feat and is something that will become increasingly more difficult as I move on to even warier targets. I feel I made the most of this hunt, getting some much needed experience with my bow in a proper hunting situation, making calls on wind and the direction to approach the animals, closing the distance even if only a couple of yards just to get my pin exactly where I wanted it. All these somewhat small things that are second nature to more experienced hunters are only ingrained in you from experience and this was one I'll never forget. I got to live the life of a hunter. More importantly, I finally feel like one. And it all took place in the time span of a couple of days. I ate the meat from an animal I hunted. I saw some amazing country and grew as a bow hunter. I'll be bringing enough meat home to start stacking the freezer and cooking meals for those closest to me. All the while remembering a feeling of accomplishment while living out some sort of primitive urge to hunt and gather that which is wild. <laughs>